in the battle bus. This is it, all on the line. Let's see who will take away another victory royale, or will we see one of our two winners get back-to-back -back wins, get double wins? That will be massive for them. Oh, man, I'm excited, Monster. And so far, Aqua has been the only player to prove that he can win on a stage of this magnitude. But just to give you guys a little context on the bus here, this is a bus coming from the south to the north side. So all of your competitors are going to get bus. yes a fair split at the map here. And that's exactly what you like to see. You want everyone to have a fair shot at the map. So let's go ahead and see as Skype is looking to land here. We saw Skype win that last game. Yep. It's just outside of Pleasant Park. He's probably playing for some ballers here in our top 10 over on the on left hand side here, Golden Boy. Booga, King, Commandment, Psalm, yeah. one of our competitive veterans doing so great right here. Even with that one win though, Sky is still in sixth place. Yeah, it's, it, it's wild to think about that that's what it took for him to be able to climb up into the top 10. Only two eliminations to his name currently standing. But we're going to keep eyes for the, for the time being here as we head on over to Junk Junction. There's a hot spot there as well. We have talked oh. to some players about landing for hot spots. I actually just got word from production in the back. King has been eliminated off spawn. Wow, that's huge. That's going to be a real big setback. We've yes. seen players like Zayt and Saf really fall behind yesterday off of one game not going their way. That is rough, man. That is certainly not going to be pretty for him. But hey, you have three more games remaining. You just got to shake that one off. Moving on, though, we're checking out the action at hand here. You're going to have Kuzel pushed right in. He's going to make him pay. That's going to be an elimination on to Fledimois. Well done. Number one on the board. I'll be honest, I wouldn't trust myself with that Magnum, but he gets right up on him and hits him in the chest. Here now with Crew. That was the shot. Oh, Crew, no chill. That's right on the sky replay. platform, too. That was how King was taken out. Couldn't even land safely. Got pinched right out the sky. That's rough. Because there's nothing you can do. You're in a glider state. You're just floating down. You're hoping that no one's looking right at you. The players at this point, they're going to go for those shots, those open opportunities. And you got Tuzi, who had just picked up an elimination earlier on. The circle is going to be over in the ice biome, so by the Polar Peak, Frosty Flights area, and it's also going to be within Pleasant Park as well. So the eastern part of the map, they're going to have to worry about moving on over to the safe zone. Now we're going to be looking at a crowd favorite here. We got Tifu. Yeah, he's Tifu, had the best run so far. He, he's been playing the blocks. He's been getting out of the block successfully. It's actually Clipnode who's been landing here from the Bra uh, Brazilian region. Again, known for landing on a weapon and pushing straight into whoever's at the block. But Tifu has successfully defended himself, even in the warm-up games. T was winning all of the early game engagements. And, uh, you know, shout out to Clip. He actually changed his strategy. Clip went for a shot there. Yeah, he's, but, but Clip node stopped pushing, though. He's not using the same strategy. He's actually adopted so far. But let's see what Tifu can do in these moments. He's chucking some perfect grenades across. Yeah, in game one, Clip node ended up getting everything that he needed and then disengaged out of the block whereas Tifu took a little bit more time to loot up, get as much as he possibly can. Clipnode from the Brazilian region here, who it, it, it's a possibility that he can take him out, but it's yes. going to be very challenging. And maybe it was just the difference in loadout. Maybe before he didn't have exactly what he needed. Now we can kind of peek into his loadout here. This is a very strong loadout. He's got everything he needs to stick around and take this battle. And that's why you see him playing with such confidence now. And this could just be his game. And it was also admirable of him as well. You know, qualified week nine, last chance to do so. Argentinian player as well. Then you got Takamura now. Sees a player right in front of him. Happy Hamlet is where this fight's going to be taking place. As Clarity G made it to the end game in game two. Had high ground there for a moment. Thought he could have pulled that one off. Mr. Savage has eyes on Clarity. G does put the pressure on him. Now Clarity's going to have to deal with a player that's behind and in front of him. So just Shadow Bombs on out of there. He's going to have another one to use as well in case he needs to pop it. But it doesn't seem like anyone's going to be paying any attention to him for right now. There's over six players landing at Happy oh. Hamlet. But we're jumping right into this battle right here. Unknown Army who has had the time to prove to the world that he is here to bring the heat. Early on in our competitive days, Unknown Army was known. Oh. Take over, Golden. This is it, man. Unknown Army, one of our first controller players. Actually, he was our first controller player to qualify for the Fortnite World Cup. Perhaps this is going to be the opportunity that he was looking for a monster. 
put himself on this stage. Get a big opportunity. Things have slowed down here for a moment. He's looking to overtake that roof. If he can get it, if he can get it, if he can get possession of that. Head it on out. That's Commandment. Commandment's going to be sitting at the top five, if I'm correct, currently. A good fight here between two quality players. It's not a battle he wants to lose. There's lots of proof here. Unknown Army, one of the few controller players in it. We saw Wolfies have a big day yesterday. That wall's his. He's got the aggro. The last one is not, though. He's charging right in, and, uh, and Commandment's going to have to get out of there. Didn't want to deal with that player. He knew the Unknown Army just had that beat on him. Wisely enough, and look at the health there. That's why Commandment does not want to go for that fight. He's going to be in dire straits right now, as Unknown Army does have the life lead. He's just taking all of these platforms, too. He's gaining control slowly but surely. Nice little peek right there. He goes for the, the staircase Ooh. first. So clean. Doing this all with a controller. You know, you know, we have millions of players that play on controller at home, and he goes in, does put apply white damage. One more, that's gonna do it. Commandment was in third place. An unknown army now made him put in the place that he wanted him to. Dominant. And a little taunt to throw some salt on the wound right there. Now hopping to the other side of the map, we have Blaster. He's looking for a vehicle, he does have a baller. His main priority right now is metal and more loot. Let's take a look here. We got Martin. He's got eyes on a target. Also using his Sky Stalker skin. One of my personal favorites. Charges forward with that drum gun. Close range, but no! It was low boom! Who <laughs> gives him the hands there? Fun fact, Christian, our boy from Fortnite VR Live, told me, look out for low, bloom, low boom. Someone to definitely take eyes on. They did eliminate one another, though. So, boom, not in this one. Maybe you can find some better luck in games four, five, and six. Yeah, that is the risk you take when you jump into someone's box here in the Fortnite world. Leshy, another controller player, bringing it back to the good old nostalgic Tilted Towers for that close range PvP. He's going to get shot a few times right there, but still keeping his cool. He has plenty of extra shields and mobility. Shockwaves are going to be great for maneuvering around this congested area. That's what it is. Four players in Neo tilted right now. That's you have to be careful. This is a controller battle, actually. We'll see who can best one another here. Sleshy's probably looking to take this wall. All right, he's going to break into the building now. Get that high ground over his opponent. Stannis is just waiting, not making a sound here, seeing if he can bait Leshy into a trap play. Let's see. He's going to fall for it. We'll... You make a mistake, and that's really what it is, right, Golden? Yeah, it is, it is. In, when players are on that stage here in the audience, the crowd, everyone cheering, there's obviously going to be that added pressure. We talked with a few of the players before the game started today. The number one thing that I think everyone brought up to me was just the volume, right? This, the sheer presence of where we are. And some of them even went as far as to say, yeah, I don't think I'm going to look up at all. I think I'm just going to focus on the screen. That's what I know. No reason for me to try and go above and beyond anything else, right? Sometimes the moment can take you away. You can see both points of POVs right here, both, both points of views. Yeah. They're looking to take any walls that they can just to you know, gain control, have a little bit of an advantage here. Yeah, it, it, this is basically like the Fortnite equivalent of an arm wrestling match right now. Maybe for some of our parents who are joining us here for the first time, haven't watched Fortnite before. They're really just struggling to try and get positioning over the other player. That is the struggle that they're wrestling with here. See, use wrestling again. Worked out well that time. All right, Lesh this time has decided to commit. He is now down face to face. There is nowhere. Astonish can run. He goes into it. Oh, Lands man. the two shot. And that's the little tactic right there. If there is a ramp in front of the wall, you have to recognize you are in big danger because there's a nifty little trick to get you in that box. Another one of my favorite players here. You got Legend Ian. He's going to be in a fight right now. Moves around the side, loses the high ground. Oh, man. That is rough. Legend Ian not having the best games at this point in time. Pizza's placed eighth on average when he qualified in the online opens. On average, across every game he loaded into, that's very high for placement. And now he's picking up Elims. Unfortunately, like we said here, Ajadian just not really connecting the dots today, but it's yeah. not over yet. We're only halfway through this competition here. Uh, there's Lechi who has to get out of there. 
Whew. That could have been very dangerous, but gets an elimination on Kinstar. A massive elim here for Leshi, who's sitting right now at two elims currently in this battle at Neo Tilted. Representing for all the controller players across the world, Leshi, very dangerous. It's going to be a huge upset right there. And you just get close range with a player like Leshi in they'll punish you, right? When you have the controller, you have that, that little bit of the, the ability to just L-trigger, you're gonna have, and I know some people are gonna be like, oh, L-trigger, low, low, whatever, but the reality is, right, you got the full use of your arm, they have the use of your thumbs, but when you push in for there, you just don't wanna box with them inside of that. It's very rough to deal with. Maybe, maybe Ruck said it best, you know, just the age difference. Unless he's 15, you know? Could just be a little faster than kids start here. Yeah, I know. When I was 15, I was nowhere near as good as he was with a controller. So, and I play, and I competed for a very long time. That crew was just in this fight here for the moment. He does get ownership of the wall because that player does disengage above him, and he hears that movement all around. You can also get a get an eye on the bottom right of your screen. You can see the mini map where players are going to be located. The player we're typically on is going to be that white triangle, but. That blue triangle, that other player goes right in for the fight, is going to knock down the shield just a little bit there. He's going to have minis to be able to top himself back up. This is very intense here, Balloon. Yeah, yep. Shockwave. Yeah, you don't want to go for that fight. Shockwaves are so important. Players saving him for that late game. And in some cases, they'll just use it, disengage. You don't want to take a fight. There's no reason for you to do so. A lot of players playing cautiously, as they should, with what's on the line here, but crew. Oh, he marches forward. That's number two for Crew. You can see the excitement there. Nice little smirking grin on his face. See, he throws a peace sign to the crowd when he takes that <laughs> player lucky right out. This happy Hamlet area is so, so dangerous to rotate through. You have players like Mr. Savage. Now we see Left Eye and Kurtz. Left Eye was responsible, again, for a big upset in the last game, taking out the likes of some huge names towards the end game. But Kurtz here with a heavy sniper. Can he open up a base here and follow up with that infantry rifle? So he's coming up, he's getting his little peek on right here. Yeah, I think uh, Ninja yesterday had talked about the infantry rifle, how good that weapon is. And, and it truly, I mean, the accuracy that you get out of it is absurd. It's something that you, if, you, if you pick it up and you know how to use it, you'll be deadly out there in the field. But she has done a lot of times Ninja, which is why he likes that weapon so much. And, I don't understand why a lot of our players will go for that as well. When you have the option to, why not? If you got that comfortability with it. Then you got left eye. Two eliminations currently. Has two shockwave nades. And you know, you got to give some respect to left eye who completely left his previous job six months ago to fully focus in on competitive Fortnite. And he found himself at the Fortnite World Cup stage. I don't think it gets any better than that. That is a dream story here. Yeah, in competitive gaming, you, you take those risks if you want it so badly. If you want it more than you, than, than you have to breathe, you just go for that moment. You never know what's going to happen. This could very well be a lot of the people in this arena next year playing on that stage. Courage just said that they had the budget. So I'm just, just going along with what he said. You know? <laughs> All right, but here we have Tifu. Tifu playing his classic high ground center map, more or less. He does have a lead for the next zone. Yep, movement options for him, which in the last game, he had the shadow bombs. Didn't really pan out for him because King, very thirsty, went for just all, all the water he could possibly get out of that one. And I say he, he certainly was quenched in his thirst. But then TV Stop. now, this is, uh, sometimes you're flying and then you just become a magnet. And that is unfortunate. It's Clarity G who picks uh. up Tifu. Unfortunately, right there with one wall open from behind him. That's so difficult. Not placed down, unfortunately. That's so difficult. There are times you fly into the sky and then the entire server just looks right at you. It's all about timing in Fortnite here, but that's the risk you take. So now looking at Link here. Link putting some pressure up above. Remember, Storm Surge is in effect in these games, so you have to be hyperactive. You have to be proactive for seeking for damage. But when you commit to battle, you are more than likely going to have to finish that battle. Here we have Robabs. He's kind of looking up. He's holding that edit, though. He is ready to open it up. I think he's going to trade fire as soon as Link goes for the shot. 
He's now they're both, yeah, they're both playing that little mind game right here. <laughs> Who's gonna go first now? New circle, now active. This is what we like to call a shambles loadout as Link doesn't have <laughs> much loot. No, doesn't have much loot, doesn't have much HP either. He's gonna have to try again in the next game. It's Robabs does manage to get the better. Oh man, this is intense. Now we're at 62 players remaining. Some players taking fights, others really just focusing on staying alive. Staying in this one to the placement points. That's right, and now we have Leshy back with Leshy. We saw him in Neo Tilted, taking out the likes of Keenstar, astonished in these 1v1 battles. Clearly not afraid to jump in your box. And oh man, with a loadout like this, six shockwaves, three launch pads, all the ammunition in the world, and zone favor right now. He is good looking builds. very good in game three right now. Yeah, he's got a lot of builds. He's got tons of stuff to work with. No reason why, unless he can't make it to that end game. This is gonna be interesting. Controller player, let's not forget yesterday, Wolfie's controller player in second place here in the Fortnite World Cup duos competition, along with his teammate Ro Rojo. There's Lechi, though, applying the pressure. With that shockwave nade, he gets right on top of a nice, nice spot, nice position, kind of planning himself, understanding a player's going to be around there, but now all these players looking right at him as he just has to play defense, no choice. Gets tagged up a little bit, loses some of his shields. He'll be okay for the time being. The amount of players you see on the stadium side that once he's showed his, 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 his self to that angle right there and everyone just collapsed on him. That is so scary. And it's still coming in, but he's fending himself off, punishing another player off to the east side right there. There's Leshy. He can figure out that that player is the same one that just tried to make a move on him. Could spell disaster for Evil Mare. Evil Mayor doesn't have much to work with regarding health, right? He's sitting at just above half HP. Right above him is going to be Clash. Got Pizis as well. Down low on the flooring. And there's Clash. Good loadout as far as weaponry is concerned. Also has that glider with the HP that he has currently. Ugh. Might want to take doesn't. advantage of his Shadow Bomb or something like that rather than exposing yourself to the sky. But this is another play from earlier on, I believe. Or Actually, no, Storm Surge active currently. And we are so we are in line. Apologies, apologies there. So he's sitting he's sitting on two ballers here. You, you see one here. He knows his opponent's gonna have to go for one, but I guess a little bit of scouting oh. there is gonna realize someone's waiting, baiting all of the loot as well. Also off screen, Leshy did take out Evil Mare. You mentioned that before, Monster. Ended up happening. And then Storm now. 65 HP. Where is this player that went in for the fight? It's Wakey. Wakey's right nearby. Storm and Wakey are sitting now in the zone here. Biding time here. Wakey, three eliminations tied up for the most elims in the game so far. You have Wakey, Leshy, and Aspect all at three eliminations so far. Just under 50 players remaining in game number three. Players have boxed up. They want to play this slow game. Wait for anyone to make a mistake. It's going to be hard, but for some players like Dubs, they're going to need it. Because thus far, it has not gone well for, I would say, one of the favorites here. Dubs did go for the shot. Unfortunately, could not connect. It looks like Clarity's going to pick up four gaming there instead. Dubs, we saw in the previous game, do that baller all the way to the end game. Yep. Really playing slow and methodical here. You can't stand still. Dubs has definitely found himself a target nearby. He sees them, and I think they're, they're just looking at each other. They know exactly what's going on. The circle's going to be closing down now. We're going to find out where the next one is. And that's when players start to prioritize th these rotations and movement. Dubs does have a baller, which has been his strategy. He did it in game two. He had the baller pretty much all the way until the end there. Got shot out of it. But it did bring him to a second place finish. Another top three finish for him, top five, top three, maybe even a victory royale, right? But ideally that, oh, oh. You tried to catch him right there, that you saw that? Wild. You wanted to put him in the box for a second there and take Just it. Scrapped him right there, player will have no idea what to do at that moment.
It's actually pretty interesting as well because Class is desperate right now for an Elam. He has to really feed off of a Siphon. He doesn't have any other way to heal. Even taking the safety edits, making doorways so that he doesn't expose himself even for the slightest bit. 84 builds left for Class. Tons of builds here. And then the Storm. Now the Storm's starting to push. Look at Lechi. Still going for shots as players are moving about. They can saw a player get right in his face. He did pop that Shadow Bomb. Now we're going to the game one winner, Booga. He's dealt 420 damage in this match. Hasn't taken a single shot. One elimination for him right now. As now the action feed begins to fall. You see so many names getting eliminated one by one. Bizzle out of this one. That was from Lechi, who's having one heck of a game, taking out some big names. It is really going down right here. You can just kind of breathe in this overhead view Attention, right here. Man. Bella EU doesn't even realize he has the high ground right now. Clarity G just nearby as well. Bugga at the upper layers in this end game, just trying to avoid that lower ground con the congestion. Yeah. All these players are just slammed in the middle right here. As Andretta gets the high ground, we haven't seen much of Andretta so far. But you gotta be careful, those shockwaves will really sting and take that placement from you. Yeah, he has been laying low so far, but does manage to maintain the high ground. Lost it for a brief moment, but wisely enough went outside of the storm to regain some of those builds. On the right side of your screen, you got Booga and Lechi. Lechi, a great game that he's managed to put together with five eliminations. Booga, your game one winner, maybe looking to get a second win on the board. How massive will that be for your current first place player? Lechi just picked up his sixth elimination wow. now. He is really popping off right here. I was here. on Hood J2, a big, big player there and a big connection for him. Lots of builds to work with. Booga does get another one. That's Kinzel. Right through the trap he goes. Booga, one of the superior box fighters in the Fortnite competitive Let's scene went right to, now. Let's see went up for the high ground. If you see it on the left side, he went high ground. He does get possession of it, but ends up getting hit there by Entretta and finally eliminated. But what a run Lechi had in this game. Finally comes to a conclusion when he went for high ground. Now it's Booga again with 11 players remaining. We're about to get into the top 10 here, Monster. Look at oh, last we saw. Oh. He does get taken out right there. Unfortunately, it's Peter Pan who takes him out with six eliminations. Peter Pan, the dark horse right now. He's gonna get wiped out here too, but it's still a great game. Wakey, who we saw leading in eliminations at one point, is still popping off as well. Skype's in this one as well. Maybe he's gonna get a back-to-back -back win. River Sun, he's got the high ground. He's got the splodes. He sees players. He has 11 builds, so he has to be very conservative with this. Does pop that player in the baller, forcing them down. Going in for the engagement now. More splodes, five remaining left. Player lands in front of him, and he tags him up for a lot of shields there. And River Sand has to reset. Needs to be careful not to get hit by that storm. Someone's gonna be above him! He's and too good! An elimination onto Skype. We're now sitting at a 1v1. Two players left standing here. Who's it gonna be down low? It's Dubs! It's Dubs down low! And River Sand has Dubs on his sight! Who's gonna get the win here? River Sand navigating, tarping. He has seven builds remaining. Dubs trying to play defense, giving himself any kind of cover that he can possibly maintain. But River Sand, a few more explodes remaining. That could punish Dubs. He's really trying to keep him down to the zone here, Golden Boy. Oh man, this is it. He sends another one out, and they're just telling him he got to run. He goes into it. He's still holding position. Dubs has the high ground, but he got in front of him, and Dubs gets a victory royale on the world stage. Absolutely incredible for Dubs to connect. Finally hits all of his shots, and nearly a back-to-back -back performance right there. That is the kind of comeback story you want to see here on the main stage. Prove to the world that you're the greatest to ever do it. But you got to give credit to River Sand. Second place finish for him there. Had the high ground, had the explodes, but it was Dubs who managed to get the better of River Sand. And look at this unfold right here. River Sand had the rockets looking right at Dubs, and Dubs just needed to play defense. River Sand had no more builds to work with, and Dubs recognized he had the high ground. He just needed to go in there for the clothesline, and he nails it with that green pump. That is the name of the game. You cannot miss your shots when you fully commit. Dubs and Mega sitting side by side. What a better player to have nearby you. Arguably probably his best friend right here in the competition. Hey man, that was nuts.
What a game from Dubs. And what a, what a journey he's had. Four-time qualified. We know that he is...